Lita Ford with Lita. Nine tracks, 40 minutes, the third solo studio album from Lita Ford, uh, released February 1988 by RCA Records, produced by Mike Chapman. Four singles were released, Kiss Me Deadly, Back to the Cave, Falling In and Out of Love, and Close My Eyes Forever, uh, which was a duet with Ozzy Osbourne. The album peaked at number 29 in the US, number 42 in Canada, and number 45 in New Zealand, uh, taking the album to platinum in the US and gold in Canada. The lineup for this was made up of Lita Ford on guitar and vocals, Dave Aaron on keyboards, Don Nosov on bass, and Myron Grombacher on drums. I hope I got those right. <laughs> uh, this was Lita's first release on this label, as well as a first with Sharon Osbourne as manager. Mm. Go for it. Uh, I always thought that Lita's sort of title of the first lady of heavy metal was a bit unjustified. Okay. Um, you know, she's not, she's not really metal for mine. She's not even really close. She had the metal image mm. um, and I think she might have been sort of elevated in the metal world through a bit of lack of competition through that sort of mid 80s as far as other women that were that were really doing it at the time she yeah. was the most aggressive out there at the time I think yeah, but, uh, I don't know Look, every everyone that was in the metal had a leader port photo uh, a leader forward poster on their wall Jody included yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know a part of me just thinks that was to offset like the man of war poster and stuff in case your parents were getting worried about what was going on <laughs> so you got all these men in fairy undies all the way up and you know, no no mum look I've got Lita Ford as well yeah, not there's anything wrong with men in fairy undies don't get me wrong but I just think it elevated her status a little bit beyond where it probably should have been okay this is a pretty straight rock album for mine and would have been comfortable as a sort of soundtrack to any sort of classic 80s film i I was getting montage tunes. Yeah, mm. the love songs were very sort of slow motion. It was eighty eight. Yeah, it was very eighty eight. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But there's there's songs in there that could have been background music to you know a bunch of kids walking into a, the mall. You know, like it was just that little bit too light on and cheesy for mine. I get um, what you mean, but yeah. Yeah, having said that, I'm sure Lita Ford was an inspiration to many to you know pick yeah particularly girls to pick up the guitar and, mm. and go on and look, she did a great job and she was she represented. Yeah, you know, she did her thing and it was great. She's yeah. lovely too, by the way, having interviewed her in person. Actually, She's... I watched that interview. Yeah. <laughs> I just watched that interview She's today. Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah Lee's vocals on this are uh, certainly passable. They're not. Yeah. She's not a great singer, but they're, they're really good. She's her better guitar... live than on record, man. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Her guitar works really solid on yeah. this. I don't, I don't know if she gets the props she deserves as a guitar player, mm. to be honest but it was pretty good. I think that's true. Um, I liked the album. I enjoyed it, but it felt nostalgic to me, not... Classic. It is a bit time stamped, I'll get that. Yeah. Um, so it didn't excite me heaps, but look, I gave it five out of ten. Um, the highlights are me. Kill you. Yeah, she <laughs> might. The highlights are Can't Catch Me, Fatal Passion, and Close My Eyes Forever. Alright. Um, <laughs> Rebuttal. Allow me to retort. <laughs> <laughs> Bearing in mind that I live with Jody, who is Leader Ford's biggest fan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I um, did not know this. No. <laughs> and you were flying blind. <laughs> this one may go to TV after all. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting to go through the writing credits and see names like Lemmy Kill Mr. Nick yeah, Six, Nicky Mick Six, Smiley, yeah. and Ozzy Osbourne yeah. on this. That said, uh, Leader, David Ezra, and producer Mike Chapman wrote the bulk of this, with Leader only missing credits on two tracks mm. for the writing, which is back then probably almost unheard of yeah. for a woman to have that much influence on the writing of the mm. songs um, I thought there was pretty big production it does hold up well today in mm. the grand scheme of things I get what you mean about the time stamp mm. of the era the music mm. the sound the style all sorts mm. of, but that production wise holds up well Yeah, I reckon the only place you notice the age on this is a little bit in the drums but apart from that it sounds good vintage record with big reverbs and nicely layered synth as you would expect from this era I thought the guitar tone was great and the yeah. bass tone was great too um, the guitar was a standout yeah. I think and, and the whole thing was, yeah. alright well here we go <laughs> uh, I personally feel that Lita is far too often overlooked for her talent personally no, yeah. no she, she wasn't the best ever <laughs> But she's certainly talented with both the guitar and the vocal. Mm. And there weren't many that were doing both at the same time, especially mm. back then. The only knock you can give her is that the vocal, she probably tries a little bit too hard mm. on this record. Uh, but it's all about the attitude in that concept. So mm. I think it works in that regard. Besides that, her guitar work is damn good, like you were saying. Mm. Writing-wise, she's strong on this one. Uh, again, I've looked, I feel, in the greatest scheme by rock and metalheads. I think, like you said, she may have been elevated too much. But I think as the years have gone by... Mm her place has been diminished because she went very quiet for a long time. People have mm. sort of forgotten the impact she had at the time when she did come out. Yeah, she was groundbreaking. She was a pioneer. There's no doubt yeah. about that. But, yeah. 
as I said mm. for the record, she's a gun live. Mm. No, she's fantastic. Like, if you haven't seen her live, that's mm. where she shines the most. But I like the little things that have been left in on this. There's little woohoos and stuff like that that mm. shows how much fun she was having in this studio, mm. and that, for me, is always infectious when you get those um, things. And one of the funny little observations I have is that one of the weaker tracks on this one was Blueberry, mm. but she didn't write it at all. And yeah. that's one of the weaker tracks on that, as far as I was concerned. Mm. Um, I love the flow on the album. The great use of picks and troughs to keep you invested in a listen. Uh, it's got great album craft and love the diversity in the tunes as well. Mm. Some soft moments, there's some almost pop moments in Kiss Me Deadly. It's like mm. a bit of a pop song in that. But there's also quite a few ball tearing tracks in here. Like the guitar work is no slash and it gives you plenty of attitude. So, yeah. not strictly metal per se, but mm. very heavy rock at the same time, though. Mm. I would say. You probably disagree. Pretty radio friendly. For the most part, I get what you mean by the radio <laughs> friendly, but then again, in 88, everything that had guitar was radio friendly, so yeah, it's a bit of a different time. Yeah. She's got a spark, and I reckon she mm. conveys that well through the mm. record, and I enjoy that about her performances. And overall, it's just a great late 80s record uh, that I think people should value more. I think for whatever reason, Lita's career has been more appreciated by women than men mm. overall. Just a thought on my point of view. I know that Jody absolutely mm. adores her, whereas I haven't been as invested in her career overall. Mm. Uh, the more I listen to this record though the more I get into the groove and the depth of it I love the lyrical craft on it as well I think she's underrated as a lyric writer uh, that part shines on songs like Under the Gun and Broken Dreams big 80s sounds performances ballsy songs with nice melody and hooks with great riffs and hits uh, this is a great album as far as I'm concerned I don't think you should overlook it I reckon it's worth it for the track Close My Eyes Forever Alone I've always loved that track Good song. great duet uh, 8 and a half out of 10 Close My Eyes Forever Kiss Me Deadly Fatal Passion Can't Catch Me and Under the Gun Check it out for yourselves. Let us know what you think.